Hi, my name is Duffy and Lincoln Park, you know you're fully burned when not only did Chester's son reach out to the public about you guys, but also his mother. I made a video about Emily Armstrong and how Kedrick and his wife exposed her for being a Scientologist and a supporter. You can watch the video about it, link in the description. So today we'll be focusing on Chester's family member's side of stories about Lincoln Park. On the Rosedown interview, Chester's mom said the band promised to notify her if it had any inkling of moving forward. She had run into Mike and Joe recently, but none of the members gave a mention about the reunion. Either both members wanted to surprise her, but couldn't find the time to do so, or deep down, they know who Emily truly is, and they know his mom wouldn't be a fan of it. Briefly, she said she felt betrayed and is very upset about it. She also felt like they're trying to erase the past. Same as what Chester's son said, that they're quietly erasing his father's legacy, the band's aspects, and future during interviews. Back to his mom, but I know how I take it, and having her sing my son's songs is hurtful. She also said Samantha, aka Bennington's first wife, and Draven, his son, didn't know until it was told to the world. Basically, they completely brushed Chester off after reunited. If one truly values him as his brother, then they would've kept the promises. For Chester, you know. She talked about how they met up a few years ago. Mike tried very hard to recreate a relationship with Samantha, chatting regularly. But Samantha disputes Susan's version, saying I have not spoken with Mike ever since I married Chester. I have not seen him since my divorce in 2005. I believe my mother-in-law is mixing up bands between Lincoln Park and Grey Days. Grief and sadness messes with your memory. She found out about Emily joining the band on Google, thought Mike would be the singer cause Chester did taught him how to sing, aka it would just be the band not adding a singer. Who cares when someone's time runs out? When she gave a listen to their new concert, aka Emily's performance, she said I didn't want to hear it as she is screeching her way through a very high note, then she cried. Recalling that Mike told Chester he thought saying these songs would be better with a girl, because he often put Chester down. Chester called her, saying he thinks that they are going to replace me with a girl. What do you mean, she said. Mike told me at rehearsal that if you decide you're leaving, we're going to replace you with a girl. He said, leaving him dumbfounded and hurt. What? So Mike was thinking about replacing him even before his death? I need a moment. I need a moment. Oh my days. What? Excuse me, I beg your finest pardon. What? But of many talented male singers like Fernanda Laura and Alyssa, for example, who has a growlier or heavier voice, why Emily? And also, you know, her pa. And the fact that they now did it. She said how she's okay with having Mike as the vocalist, but she's not okay with somebody singing Chester's song, trying to recreate him. When I heard that, I was just so repelled that no, they're trying to do exactly what Chester did, but they are not succeeding at it. Ending it with, if I could tell the band members anything, is that I feel betrayed. Don't put her out there to sing Chester's songs and then act like this was always the way it should have been. It's like making him go away, erasing the past. Don't bother to put out Chester's songs with Emily singing them. Preach! Preach, mother of Chester Bennington! I'm starting to side with fans that said how he could've just start a new band or side project instead. Of course, Emily responded under a post about them, basically saying how it feels so many trolls to hate on her. Well, maybe if you cut ties with your OSA parents and actually address your letter on behalf of Danny, perhaps you wouldn't feel so much hatred towards you. During these past days, I watched two interviews where Mike talked about the new era of Linkin Park so I could know the situation better. Emily's vocal, when Emily sang on it. The song was at that point was pretty written. So and we had been making new songs with her from scratch. Here's what my peanut brain thought is that he would make a side project that features Emily, maybe naming it Zero. But what the hell but I can't wink. Wait. Yeah! Or naming it Park and Link, while making new music for Linkin Park, and maybe inviting his son, or using himself as the vocalist, until he invited her to sing the emptiness machine. We're like, oh you know what? Will you sing on this one that we've already done, like just learn the words and whatever, and she came in and crushed it. I guess his memories about replacing Chester with a girl came back and was like, Ah yes, that's the female vocals younger me wanted instead of Chester's voice. No wonder he said this. And we were like, that's a Linkin Park song. Like you can't listen to that song and say it's anything else. Like it was at, the, at that point too, we were like considering, should we call this a different band name? See, see, he did for 
thought of making a new band, a new blank canvas at some point. If one has a tad bit of decency towards their bestie's work, at least they could've left it there, like not singing his songs for example, and focusing on their new EP and upcoming works. But really, they could've started a new band or side project so they could have a blank canvas to fully inject their new beliefs into the lyrics. I listen to a lot of bands, Linkin Park being one. I don't just listen to it because of the music, but for Chester's lyrics too, because Loki have been going through it as well. Sometimes you gotta feed a beast and just sit there and let it sink in. Those lyrics were pulled out from his heart and experience. Another reason why Linkin Park is still relevant to this day is because the lyrics are genuine, not in a only wanting attention, fame and empathy from that certain group of people. I know I sound like an old head that's stuck in the past, but really, if lyrics don't matter then emo core, screamo, punk, grindcore, etc. wouldn't be taken seriously by their fans. Let's bring the band back or like let's find a singer. It was never, that was never our intention or our goal. If that's not your intention, then start a new band. Look, fans are one of the most loyal people you ever met, especially elder fans that have seen the band went through their changes. We wrote it, we came up with the music while we were creating the new band. Like we, when we started the music, we didn't have a band. Just like what Chester's mom said, don't sing his songs. It kind of gives off the vibe of wanting to erase the past, more like erasing Chester, so they could grab new money and new fame from younger fans while also keeping over Linkin Park fans by saying how they're attributing for Chester but choosing someone who is a Scientologist and a supporter of Danny Masterson. Also, I'm starting to question that the team also wanted them to use Linkin Park's legacy and name so they could spend less money on promoting their new music knowing how loyal their fanbase is. Here's what some fans said about the situation under a forum. Also, I think Christina insinuated that Mike Shinoda is part of the church now, right? I wouldn't be surprised because he said he's friends with Emily for years. Didn't think I could be more disappointed in this band, but here we are. However, we can't fully blame them. We gotta leave some room for the team behind and the label behind Linkin Park. I mean, if the mic turning towards Scientology statements are true, then it would be kind of track that they are basically cut off anyone tied to Chester after a certain point, as sad as it is. That could be a huge reason why they didn't inform Chester's family about the reunion. What if, deep down, Scientology is now linked with Lincoln? I see some comments on the Rolling Stone article of people saying, Chester wasn't the only one in the band, they're allowed to move on. But like, if they told her they let her know about stuff happening and then just decide not to when it did, yeah that sucks lol. Exactly, informing her is the bare minimum. I think she wouldn't feel this way if they, you know, at least inform her about it. In case you don't know, there's a tribute band called Hybrid Fury where the singer sounds the closest as close as you hitting that like and subscribe button. To Chester's voice. And even looking like a doppelganger of Chester. I've seen people commenting on how why Linkin Park didn't choose him as the vocalist, but instead chose Emily. But I think it would be even weirder seeing a doppelganger of Chester instead of Linkin Park in this new era. First, it feels like they're clinging on to the past, not in a good way, or using nostalgia as the way of reuniting and breaking out again. Second, there'll be even more backlash saying how he's Chester from Sheen. Whether Mike truly loves Chester or not, it would still feel weird seeing a doppelganger of your friend that looks and sounds sounds exactly like him, but knowing their soul isn't. Plus, Mike always wanted to replace him with a female vocalist, so pack it up everyone! Let Lincoln be Lincoln and let Hyper Fury continue as a tribute band. However, I'm gonna start jamming to Hyper Fury instead. I even sub to them. Who knows, there could be more people speaking up against Emily or Lincoln soon. Two steps ahead of everyone. I do understand the frustration and sorrow from Chester's mom when she said how they're trying to recreate Chester when she saw Emily sing their old songs. Again, if we use Free Day Grace, Adam Gantier, and Matt Walsh as an example, I'm sorry but they're my favorite childhood band, the difference is, is that one, Adam supports it, second, Matt Walsh has a cleaner background, no links to a controversial cult, and not a supporter. I'm gonna get jumped by some Christians saying how I'm hating on the religion, but firstly, my grandparents and my dad's relative, who was my religious teacher, are Christian and we bond very well with each other. Secondly, it's Scientology, known for all of these crimes. After all, it's your choice to continue defending Emily and Mike, or if you're feeling brave, separate the music from the artist, which, good luck to you. Bombastic side-eye. Offensive 
inside. I'm gonna listen to some tribute bands in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment down your thoughts on his mother speaking out about it on Rolling Stones. If more people are speaking out about it, I'll definitely try my best to cover it all because really, Chester is a good lad and I don't want his words or speech get buried or get their meaning swept away. And I will see you guys in the next video. God bless you all. Bye-bye.